Hello, er hello, everybody. I'm here in Lechakivsky. Okay, thanks. I'm here in Lechakivsky. Svinter, you want to be on the video too? Yeah, sure. With my great friend, the notorious Slava Ukraini, Andrei Draza, Heroyam Slava. We're waiting for a funeral of a actually a distant relative of mine, though though I didn't know him, but he was killed on Maidan. Uh, he was injured there last month. Returned here to to Lviv. To get better, then returned to Maidan and and was killed there a couple of days ago, and they're burying him in this famous uh, cemetery where there's a lot of nobles and stuff like that buried. And here is a a really interesting and beautiful part of the cemetery. I don't know if beautiful is a good word to say about the cemetery, but uh, there's uh, graves from the little-known Polish. Uh, Ukrainian war from uh, 1919 to 1920. Yeah, Polish part is there. It's Ukrainian uh -huh. part. Polish part over there, Ukrainian part over here. Um, and this monument we're coming up on here is a, a very, uh, very controversial bit of Ukrainian history and important as well. Uh, so you see the first Galatian division over there and you see the, the lion symbol. Uh, now, this was actually the Galatian SS division that formed with the uh, Nazi army. Um, and there's a very sympathetic narrative to it here in, in Galatia. Uh, I'm, if this narrative is not complete or incorrect, please uh, please send comments. But uh, as I understand it, the division formed in 1943 when it was absolutely clear that the Nazis would lose the war. And it formed with two stipulations. Um first that that uh they only be used to fight the advancing red army the bolsheviks and second that they be the only ss unit allowed to have priests the priests are significant as i understand it cuz uh the first thing that the red army did when they came to lviv was kill all the priests in 1939 then they were driven back of course by the nazis then then the red army advanced again and that was when this division formed when uh, when Lviv was going to go into the hands of the Red Army again, and they remembered that slaughter of priests. Um, coming to this part of the monument, it's really interesting. It says, uh, what does it say there? Ukrainske Junatstvo proti Letunskoj obrane. It was defensive units of Ukrainian of Ukrainian youth that was fighting against the anti aviation. anti aircraft Anytime, and yeah. was this within the context of the SS division oh, I'm not sure probably that this belongs to the earlier part of Ukrainian okay. Ukrainian Polish war or something like okay. that we should just confirm this information okay. uh, another thing about the SS division they took about a 75% KIA in the battle of Brode so so they were almost all destroyed um, about uh, 13,000 young men from western Ukraine. Um, and at the Battle of Brode, they actually faced the first Ukrainian front of the Red Army. So if you're going to criticize Ukrainians for forming an SS division, you can also credit them with destroying one. Uh, both world wars had the nature of a civil war in this part of the world. And I recommend Timothy Snyder's book, Bloodlands, which describes the plight of being trapped between Hitler and Stalin. Um, this was really interesting to me, anti-aircraft, because uh, I know a little bit of my father's history. Uh, he was 15 years old when the Germans were retreating from this part of Ukraine, and they, they conscripted him, or maybe he volunteered, I'm not sure which. Um, I know he was in an anti-aircraft unit, and uh, according to what he told me, he never saw any fighting. He just ended up a, a refugee um, in a German displaced persons camp, and after about six years, made his way to America, and didn't see his home again until his honeymoon in uh, 1974. So this was a really interesting monument to me. Oh, please hold the umbrella. Yeah, yeah. Until he hands you, this man. Okay, so now, uh, now we're a little further along. I'm okay. I okay. got it. Mm -hmm. um, and I actually just learned a bit of Ukrainian history myself. This is for the victims of communist repression and uh, the famine 46-47 after the Red Army returned. I, I didn't know that happened. Of course, the big famine, uh, which most historians call a genocide, happened in 32-33. But this was... So he says, it's very, very important 
uh, to Stalin to kill all the resistant movement, to, mm -hmm. you know, just to end all the resistant movement in Galicia, in Galicina. And he, he used all the tools he had, not just the war with partisans, but also ho Holodomor and repression. Yeah. So different stuff like that deportations so, to siberia so the propaganda is a really interesting thing because uh of course the ukrainian partisans have been and their descendants have been defending themselves for 70 years saying we're not nazis we're not nazis and you have like uh the nazi hunters like go after that uh john dimyanuk the 90 year old uh the 90 year old um auto worker in ohio uh, which to in what seemed like a completely fraudulent case, but nevertheless ruined his what remained of his old life. No, 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 no. But now, now that Putin is the enemy, they are flying Ukrainian partisan flags in Jerusalem. In Tel Aviv. In Tel Aviv. And what were they chanting in the video? Uh, Slava Ukraini, Heroim Slava, Slava Nazi. Yeah, glory to Ukraine, glory, glory to the heroes. So, I guess... I guess Ukrainian partisans are cool again after 70 years of getting called Nazis because they, they resisted the Soviet Union. Um, yeah, let's walk over there. I'm going to pause. President. Yevhen Petrusevich, the president of the Western Ukrainian uh, National Republic. Yeah, that, he. The short lived Ukrainian state that emerged for what, a few months? For a few months in 1990 after. Uh, the First World War is, was over, but yeah. but it continued here with Ukrainian-Polish War. Yeah, for so Western Ukraine. Yeah, short-lived Western Ukrainian state after World War Two. The graves of different heroes, patriots who fought for independence of Ukraine yeah. in different times. Hey, because uh, because it's such a controversial topic. Um, Oh, by the way, I oh, should say that that um, short-lived Ukrainian state um, is kind of a high watermark in the history of Jews in Eastern Europe, because yeah. uh, in all the turbulent times, you know, with all the the fighting and the slaughters, uh, that Western Ukrainian state did officially, legally, in writing, recognize the status of Jews and expressed a desire to be. To protect minority rights. Covered with the water, like a glass. And what does it say there? Brode. Uh, Brode. Division Halichina battle near Brode. Yeah, yeah. Where they were fighting a Soviet Red Army. Yeah, oh, I didn't know this was here. There's a, re there's a very good account. Well, Division Halichina fought only on the territory of their homeland, of Galichina. Right. Never out of this right. land. Um, although I think Polish critics would say that uh, the 3,000 surviving members of Galicina later participated in ethnic cleansing operations. That's nonsense. It's nonsense. There's a, the Battle of Brode has a pretty good account on Wikipedia. Uh, they were encircled by the first Ukrainian front of the Red Army, and they, they tried many times to break out but couldn't quite do it. Um, it was a pretty dramatic story for for war historians. Should we come up on that hill near the main monument? Yeah, let me pause it and we'll go up on that hill. Okay, I know there's a lot of people on my channel who are uh, interested in government and libertarians, and there's anarchists who follow me, at least a few. So uh, uh, the post-World War II... Uh, situation in Ukraine. Oh, excuse me. Post World War One situation in Ukraine was really interesting because there was a monarchy, there was a communist fighters, there was a, a, a democratic sort of nationalist uh, government fighting, uh, and there was a Nestor Machno's anarchist army. Um, really fascinating bit of history. It seems to be the only 
uh, effective anarchist army to ever take the the battlefield. Of course, his ideology was flawed. He was kind of an anarcho-communist, but he gave the Bolsheviks uh, a hell of a lot of problems. Um, I, I read his collection of essays. Kind of <laughs> interesting perspective, certainly, but not very concrete ideas. So anyway, this monument here is for uh, the Siege Rifleman. The Austro-Hungarian Empire had just collapsed. And uh, there was some divisions of Ukrainians in the Austrian well, it army. It was completely like Germans created Ukrainian Gal Galicia division mm -hmm. to fight against Russians. Okay. And the Austrians, the Habsburg, did the same thing. Yes. They created Sichovistrilsi divisions to fight against Russian right. Empire. So these were the very... Ukrainians were fighting for the, their own homeland, but on the side of German-speaking countries. Yes, yes. So, but the my the point I was getting at was that they were very professional because they had the the training under the uh, Germans and Austrians, and then after the that empire collapsed, they returned eastward and took their pro, took their military skills, and uh, and fought fought who fought the Poles. Yeah. Fought the Poles. Well, oh, and they also well, fought no. in Kiev against the Bolsheviks. Yeah, the, so the, was... the, the main battles was against the Soviet army, against the Bolsheviks. Well, yeah, right, the emerging Soviet yeah, army, yeah. where they call... And the, and the famous battle on Hora Makivka, on Makivka Mountain, against the Russian Russian Empire army in First World War. So the, the, the first, you know, bloody battles was during the First World, World War, but then... We're fighting for the independence of Ukraine. So there would be a new green grass yeah. on the in the wallies where the blood was everywhere. But yes, yes. But the glory of Sichovistrilsi will live forever. That's the main monument. Here's the founder of Ukrainian Boy Scout organization called PLOST. Maybe it has a slightly more political bent than America's Boy Scouts. Although the Boy Scouts are also political. Yeah, of course, it was and one of the main pillars of Sichuistrilsi and where the youth uh, got prepared to the real military life in the, in the fighting of Ukrainian independence. Mikhailo Holoshchinsky, the... Uh, Commandant of Sichovistrilsi, the main commandant. Dmitro Vitovsky, Polkovnik UPA, UHA, UHA, Državny Sekretar Zunr, Oden Zolovnik Politik Zunr, one of the main politicians in West yeah. Ukrainian Republic. Severin Levitsky, Siri Lev, Grey Lion, the yeah. nickname. So, probably one of the officers of main politics. Okay, so now we're, we're in the Polish part. Um, under monarchy, under the Austro-Hungarian Empire, Galicia was sort of a an ethnic division, uh, a, a ethnic gradient mm -hmm. under the uh, under the uh, under monarchy. But once the monarchy collapsed, uh, a lot of ethnic strife erupted. Lviv, the city itself, was half Polish, uh, quarter Jewish. Uh, they they a lot of the Jews were killed. Uh, when the Nazis came in 1941, and it was about a quarter Ukrainian, as I understand it. And I'm going to link to a really interesting ethnographic map from 1939. But after the collapse of uh, collapse of the monarchy, uh, a war, there was that fairly professional war between Ukrainians and Poles, and uh, eventually what had been an ethnic gradient became an ethnic line. Mm -hmm. So this is the Polish part yeah. of uh, of the cemetery. And in this case, where, where we, when we are here, I want to say thank you to say thanks to all the Polish friends and officials who support Ukrainians now on Maidan and support our revolution and attempts Ukrainians to fight against this mafia and greedy gang on the top. We will topple them and we're going to win. Amen to that. <laughs> Oh, that's, there is an interesting monument. Americanum poleglim o walce o polske. Vlatach, uh, the 
19 20 yeah, let's get closer so, while to, you explain the american it. pilots who were fighting on the polish side of the ukrainian polish yeah, war I, i i'm not sure probably but maybe it was during first world war mm. but but i'm not sure maybe maybe it was during ukrainian polish war so we're gonna confirm this uh and sources i have in my library so the when did was this cemetery built when was that controversy uh, i'm not sure about the year but but about 10 10 years ago maybe maybe well i i remember kuchma was a president okay this happened maybe in late 90s so there, there was as you can imagine there was a lot of politicking when the cemetery you know expressing such a controversial part of history was mm -hmm. built or at least this part of the cemetery was mm -hmm. built these monuments Oh, oficerowi lotnicy ze lotnicy ze skadry imieniny Tadeusza Kościuszki. As you know, Tadeusz Kościuszka is a Polish national hero, leader of the Polish Reconquista against Russians, and he was uh, uh, one of the main participants and soldiers uh, in American uh, war for independence. He was supporting mm -hmm. George Washington and all the American movement against the British really? colonization. Really? Wow, I had no idea. Read please about Tadeusz Kostuszko more and his bio. Is, is his name here? Yeah, so this 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 unit of the uh, uh, aircraft, oh, aircraft what unit was named was for him. Named for him. Yeah, got it, yeah, got it, yeah. got it. Yeah, so that's like a strong connection between Poles and Americans yes. in history. Yes, yes. All right. It's like, oh, what the hell happened? You, you, you can see. Okay, so this is also part of the Polish part of the cemetery. Uh, again, remembering the Ukrainian-Polish war. So uh, Andriy was just explaining to me the, the order of battle. Um, the Ukrainians had the siege riflemen here who were professionals. And for the beginning part of the war, um, the Poles just organized. And it was a lot of young students who organized. So you can see their ages... Um, 17 year old yeah, 18 lot, year old more younger people are here yeah in the first in the first plaque there's like, even yeah, younger ones like 15 years old Wilhelm uh, 18 17, 17 16 so, so in, in the beginning part of the war um, the Poles uh, had it pretty rough but then they brought their professional military um, so first it was a volunteer force fighting the siege riflemen, and then it was yeah, a it professional was military. The Ukrainians claimed the independence of Western Ukrainian state here. Why is them. it always so unexpected when Ukraine claims un <laughs> independence? I don't know. Poles were uh, so sure that it yeah. was their city, uh, but, uh, so it was unexpected yeah. to them. But then, then the, there was a fight with a prof with a more trained, uh, more professional Polish military, and I believe the Ukrainians were completely outmaneuvered diplomatically in the West and that they uh, ran out of supplies and then all went home and, and gave up Eastern Galatia, it's the name of this region, to Poland. Well, and, uh, Sichovistri, the Ukrainian army, was fighting on both fronts against right. Poles and against Bolsheviks. That's why they right. lost. There was a Bolshevik war uh, in happening Kiev. in most so of the country. Th they had to help in Kiev to Simon Petlura mm -hmm. because Petlura had, had no such a good army, professional army, as Galicians had. Oh, so, interesting. Yes, yeah, so Galicians was the main force of the Ukrainian yeah. army. Then. All right, let's pause it. Yes. All so so as, as we're leaving this part of the cemetery, it says here on the right, on this side rest the uh, Ukrainians, and here rest the Polish soldiers from that war. And there's a statement, uh, I guess this part was made in 2005, there's a statement uh, that the Polish, uh, uh, the Republic of Poland and the President of Ukraine are, we're making this monument for stronger relations and, and peace between our people. Yeah. So now we're in the older part of the cemetery, and you'll see one very modern grave. 
And can you tell us about it, Andrei? Uh, Serhii Kuzminski was a frontman and singer in famous Ukrainian rock band Brate Hadyukine, Gadyukine Brothers, which was founded in late 80s here in Lviv and became very popular in 90s. Uh, it, it is really non-conformist, protesting rock uh, band. Yeah. They, they, he, he wrote the texts and musics uh, with a great sense of humor and about the current political and social situation in Ukraine and he was one of the symbols of Ukrainian music in 1990s uh, and I'm gonna quote one of their famous okay, song that do now, it. That now <laughs> became uh, like one of the unofficial essences of Ukrainian movement for uh, freedom and against corruption uh, Ми хлопці з Бандерштату ходимо до церкви, шануємо батьків. Це дві мініки. And so it was a sense of humor. Kuzminsky who was originally Russian, Russian speaking man, he he just really sympathized to Galician culture, to this family culture, to this traditional He's roots from and religion. Ternopil, isn't he? No, no. He he is from from Lviv, but I uh, I have some Probably, I have some info that he was the the son of uh, Russian-speaking parents who were sent here to Lviv yeah, yeah. by Soviet government. But he became one of the patriots of this land and yeah. this place. Should we translate those few lines? Uh, we are guys from Bandarstadt. <laughs> they're kind of what? A uh, state of Bandera. Yeah, it's uh, Bandarstadt that they mm, get accused yeah. of being neo Nazis. So, so and the, we... the, the, the lyrics are like, we're part of this radical group and yeah, we yeah. go to church and like our parents. Or... Yeah, and love our parents, yeah. <laughs> um, he, he has another song, it just describes all the things that. Uh, that uh, a Ukrainian guy is keeping under his bed, so when it's time to go to Siberia, he'll have it all ready. Mm -hmm. And what is it, like two packs of cigarettes, some long yeah, underwear? Not two, but 40. Sort of uh, of Verkhovene, <laughs> yeah. Melo, the soap, uh, Maichka, Maitka, the trousers, so, the underwear. So, soap, underwear. Yeah, I'm he, keeping this for hard times in my life. <laughs> you know, like. So he, he just describes the suitcase he keeps ready for when it's yeah. time to, to get taken away to the gulag. Yeah, something like that. Right. Not the gulag, but when some some holy some some fucking mess happens on the top, you know, yeah. everything the chaos starts in society. So he has this, this, you know. All right, let's keep going. Stuff for hard times. By the way, we have special area here for KGB officers, Yuri. Really? Yeah, that, that. There's, there's one in Horodok too, the yeah. town where my mom's from. Oh, it's so here's also, another some, some grave Russian, of a... Some Russian who came here with the Soviet army and stayed to live. Domrachev Rehori Alexeyevich. So this, uh, as you can see, well-tended tomb is to uh, Volodymyr Ivashuk. Oh, Ivashuk. Ivashuk, thank you. He's a he's the composer of what's perhaps my favorite Ukrainian folk song, Chervona Ruta. It's a boy asking a girl. Well, it's about like this folklore that there's a magic flower that you can find, and and the girl, if a girl finds it, she'll find true love. And he's singing for her not to go look for it not to go look for this flower because he already loves her. And uh, he was found hanged in the forest and it's generally believed that he was killed by KGB agents for making a nationalist uh, Ukrainian art. Okay, and, and who's this, Andrei? 
This is the grave of Franciszek Smolka, one of the leaders of Polish national movement, uh, leader of the European Spring of Nations, where a lot of national revolution happened in Europe in 1848. So he was the Lviv citizen and one of the famous Poles, Polish national heroes from Lviv. Yeah. No. Yeah, some navy officer. Lyshenko, it's a Ukrainian name. Uh, With Soviet Anatoly. Soviet navy uniform. Yeah. I like to think that this little angel is praying for peace in this difficult part of the world. His literary critic and writer, Professor Mikhailo Rudnitsky. Я знаю це ім'я, але зараз не згадаю, хто це, чи скульптор, чи хтось один, напевно, скульптор або архітектор. Олімпік чемпіон з Львів Чукарин Віктор Іванович. Правобably спортсмен. Цей чоловік мав російські рути, але він жив і працював як... Very and the coach and as the sportsman here in Lviv. Very Soviet style. Yeah. Monument. He won some golden Olympic medals. Do you know the sport? Uh, he's gymnastics. But I'm oh not yeah, sure. yeah, yeah. It looks you can see his uh, shirt. Biscop, Archbiscop of Metropolia Lvovsky. So that's the Archbishop, uh, yeah. Archbishop of uh, Rome Catholic Church. Yep. Uh, here's uh, right next to the Archbishop. Uh, Isaac Isaacovich, very very Jewish name, but uh, very Roman Catholic. Uh, Roman Catholic. Uh, also archbishop. Oh, also archbishop. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's the rector of Lviv Polytechnic University, Yuri Rudovsky. Such different, very well attended, candle is still burning. Such different, different styles and different ideas of monuments. They speak to so much history, both in terms of history of art, uh, you know, not to mention, obviously, history of, of this part of the world. Famous opera oh singer. yes, of course. The Lviv Opera is named after Solomia Krushelnitska. Um, she, as I understand that she was very rich, yeah, and she then was very rich, and then Soviet, and then the Soviet Union created all her pro all her property. Yes, and she was seen. She, she had an opportunity. She had a chance to stay in Italy with her husband. To yes, live, yes. She cho he had she she had chosen to. Be back to Lviv. Yes. And, Soviet, uh, and Soviets then invaded. And Marta had told me that that you know, formerly you know the biggest star in Lviv was seen just walking around in secondhand men's clothing. Yeah. In Lviv, because yeah. uh, they Sad. took they took everything from her.
Uh, and here, of course, is uh, Ivan Franco, one of the biggest national heroes. He's on the national money. I, I said a little bit about him at the beginning of my, my tour of uh, the Lviv, uh, the burnt out buildings in Lviv, so if you look back in my videos, but he was a, a nationalist and a communist, which is kind of a strange thing. He wanted to create a, very strongly in favor of a separate Ukrainian communism, separate for Moscow, so so the, the Soviet Union was able to adopt him and use him as a symbol, and in fact they renamed one of the provinces of Ukraine after him, but the nationalists also use him you know, they just, they, you know, played up his communism and played down his nationalism. And the Ukrainian nationalists play down his communism and play yeah. up his nationalism. So, so he's a, he's a character that works for both sides. Mm -hmm. He doesn't look anything Person, like that. This very gifted man. Uh, he, he was fluent in some five or six languages. He was very, you know, workaholic. He, mm -hmm. he, 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 he translated, right it all day long and all night long. But, of course, the Marxist idea just went through him and lead, led him in the wrong yeah. in the wrong direction. I think one of his children or grandchildren is a socialist politician in Canada. Probably. If I'm not, I'm, I'm, <laughs> if I'm not mistaken. Composer, famous composer. Uh, Conservatoria Music Academy is named after wow, him. Such different styles of graves. That there's a Polish flag on that grave yeah, yeah. or scarf. Eliza Ostrowski Heidenreich, who probably her husband was the from some German aristocracy, but. Here is the Ukrainian name Kruk Raven, Hayden Rake, German name, and Ostrowski might be Ukrainian aristocracy who was, uh, who just joined the Polish culture mm -hmm. later. So very mixed history in one grave, very mixed history of this of this territory. Uh, Ihor Bilozir, you know, the man who was killed near the prosecutor's office, this monument. The, yeah, Ihor Bilozir, composer who was killed by two drunk policemen, Russian speaking. Oh, right, people. right. So if you if you look to the second of my two videos, that's a tour of the V, the, the prosecutor's office, uh, we stopped at the monument of where that, that composer was killed after getting into an argument in a in a restaurant over the language of the music that was playing. Um, yeah, so that's him. Okay, what's this? This is the place where the family of Bachevsky are buried. The famous Lviv family from Lviv. Uh, they were originally uh, bachelors. The name was bachelors. They were Jews who who, who became Polish speaking and uh, very rich entrepreneurs and uh, alcohol fabricants. So they they, they owned, made alcohol. Yeah, they made the famous brands of alcohol in Austro-Hungary. Wow! And we still have their factory here, but oh. th then it was it was expropriated by communists and closed, and there was something I, different uh, produced. But the I, I, buildings been, and yeah. are still there near uh, near Podzamche. I've been to that Podzamche. factory. There's like a crazy little Soviet-style kitchen. And yeah, and yeah, for yeah, yeah, there. for my viewers, I'll put a link yeah. down below to the so, photographs I took. I think I called so, it the most secret restaurant in yeah. Lviv. So this was the famous, really famous uh, family, uh, and we still can see the six uh, six connection uh, stars. That yes, little, yes, I like, see them. Yep. The sign of their Jewish heritage. Yes. And a, but a, a cross on top. There's a cross on top because they became Poles later. They just so, joined the official. The so official. they became Christians. Yeah. Well, you yeah. could be a Jewish and Polish. You can be. Why so, not? You can be ethnic yeah. Jewish but Christian. Yeah. Here, here you can be <laughs> whatever you, you want, want to be. Yeah. <laughs> 
here in Galicia. So now we're getting to. Oh, he was the printer. He was the owner of Print House, Printing House, okay. and president of Miesta Lvova and Lviv president, like Lviv mayor. He was very influential. Well, man, very important. Was that man. was that like keys to the city, or was he actually the politically the key, mayor? Keys of the city. Okay. And he, he he was very important man. Well, the first man of the city. Yeah. Well, so yeah, uh, old Joseph, uh, old... Joseph Newman. Joseph Newman, I I believe that's of that's an Austro-Hungarian <laughs> seal on his neck. Uh huh. Is a yeah, Jewish that's right, printer. That's right. And then and very old grave of a important figure, uh, aristocrat, uh, Jewish Newman, uh, in Lviv. And what's right in front of him? In front of Bam. Him. <laughs> they uh. So right in front of his grave, they put down uh. This uh, Russian, uh, Russian guy. Uh, we are getting close to the part of the cemetery where they buried uh, NKVD agents. So this is probably a Russian who arrived uh, with the Soviet Union. Yeah. And uh, they kind of put that his grave right in front of that other one. This guy was, was also from KGB, I'm sure. Uh, yeah. Uh, biologist, inventor of uh, some sort of vaccine, not sure what. He was murdered by uh, partisan, Ukrainian partisans yes. uh, while he was serving to the Soviet Union. Oh, he was repressing right. the, the, well, the what, Ukrainians. What, what words did they say? Like, what, what exactly? Did they say partisans? Uh, uh, or did no, they say uh, terrorists? Or? No, they don't say who, but uh, uh, ubit vrahami by enemies okay. here while he was serving, serving the Soviet uh, Union. Yeah. Well, let's start, let's start recording right now. It'll be more spontaneous. So we're we're talking Mates. a little bit. Andri Andri uh, watched a documentary about the Romanian Revolution. Romanian so we were we were talking about that as we we're walking to. Yeah, uh, here are all those NKVD officers who were killed, uh, who who just died in the uh, in the. From wow. the hands of Ukrainian partisans. Now here's you... this uh, George Georgievsk uh, Strichko stripe of of George. You know what? It, what That's it is. from Donetsk. Uh, <laughs> very complicated story. Okay, well, wait. Let well, me let yeah, me first the... let me first explain okay, for okay. my viewers <laughs> that uh, you might be surprised by the year 1948. Wasn't the war over? No, the war was not over in Ukraine in Western Ukraine. Uh, armed resistance to the Soviet Union uh, um, went on for ten years after World War Two. It was only in there were there were organized military formations. I think until 1952 or 53, and the last fighting stopped in in 1955. Of course, with the uh, with the Ukrainians losing, unless you count the rebellion lasting for 70 years, uh, and if you look at it that way, then uh, I think we we just won. But we did not, it's not, no, I don't like the way that came out, because it sounds like it's a civil war, what's happening now, and it's not a civil war between Ukrainians and Russians, it's a war between Ukrainians and their corrupt government, even war might be too strong a word, but it's a struggle between Ukrainians and their corrupt government, with a mixture of sympathy, apathy, and skepticism from the Russian population. There were Russians fighting on Maidan, there were Belarusians uh, there were at least some Israelis. There were uh, Georgians for sure. So mm -hmm. it's not a civil war against nation versus nation. Well, first, it's people versus first, government. The first victim was Serhiy Nigoyan, Ukrainian with the Armenian right. roots. His parents ran away from the war in Armenia between Armenian and Azerbaijan. So they they was searching for peace and uh, were refugees from from Armenia to Ukraine, and now. Their son died in the name of Ukrainian freedom. Okay, so, but we, we get off topic, as I almost always do when I talk <laughs> yeah. about Ukrainian history. But here is a row of graves of, uh, 
of uh, Russian agents or, or NKVD, a either agents or soldiers, I don't know what you want to call them. And Andre, you were going to tell us about... About Georgian Stripe. That yellow, so, yellow orange, yeah. and black. And I've, I've seen people from the Donbass Basin wearing that, the yeah, eastern that's, part that's, of industrial that's Ukraine. That's very complicated by, but important symbol of this conflict. Because uh, people, activists and protesters who are on Maidan, they use blue and yellow colors of the mm -hmm. symbolic uh, Ukrainian national symbolic. But their opponents uh, used to uh, used to used to use this stripe. So it's it comes from the Soviet era, but uh, has even deeper roots from. Uh, Russian Empire. It was the stripe of the one of the um, Russian Empire, um, mm -hmm. like the medal, orden. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Orden. So, uh, of of Russian in the Russian army. So the bigger biggest heroes uh, got that that medal uh, for a military uh, for valor. Valor and. Uh, then uh, Stalin decided to make this color, this stripe, the symbol of uh, uh, victory in Second World War. Oh, I see. Yeah, so it was Orden Slava, the glory medal, mm -hmm. was that stripe. And now, uh, so it comes from Soviet Union. So the opponents of Maidan, of Ukrainian Revolution, use Soviet symbolic. Mm -hmm. And that's why the stripes are here. Some supporters of... Uh, of this, those ideas came right. here to, to in the memory of those Russian NKVD soldiers or officers or agents. And of course the Orthodox crosses were put here a little bit later, much later than the graves were. Oh right, because there was no, there was no God atheism, in the Soviet Union. Atheism and communism. Yes. Yeah. So. Fascinating. Uh, one more detail about this. Um, if you notice the years that they were all, they were all born. They all died 1948, 1948, 1948, all down the row, and they were all born in uh, 1927, except for except for Martinov. Martinov, 1925. And Komarov. Oh, and Komarov. So maybe those were like the officer and the and the head sergeant. But maybe I mean they could have all been been killed in the same battle, identical graves. Um, maybe they were all buried at the same time, and uh, who knows what that story was? It's probably lost in history. But never pay attention to those. See, to why do you why do you always say the most interesting things after I shut the camera off? <laughs> <laughs> so, he he said uh, he said he's never been here. It was Andri has never been here in this part time, of the cemetery. Yeah, first time, but I heard a lot about this place of cemetery because it's like you know demonic place. A lot of a lot of NKVD agents are buried here. So what a strange people monument. usually visit those parts of. Uh, of cemetery where we were a few minutes ago, but this part is unpopular. Just the relatives or maybe supporters of of uh, of of, of yeah. this system of this ideas just visit mm -hmm. here and pay memory to those people. Uh, I'm, we're we're still waiting for the uh, funeral procession to arrive. Um, my my family is with is at the wake. It's in the, a nearby village. The, the guy wasn't from, from Lviv. Uh, And Andri was his name. Um, and it's probably going to be a, a huge turnout. I just want to show some support for my relatives. And uh, yeah, we knew it was going to be late. I don't know how late. It's already an hour after they they said it'd be here. Um. Should we try to go get some tea? Yeah, I think that's a good idea. Okay. Hopefully they'll have Wi-Fi. I want to see what's what's new. Mm -hmm.
dead, but the army of yeah. He looks like this is the sign of Major General. Major General, yeah. Nineteen oh nine to nineteen eighty two. Of the uh, Soviet oh. military. Another major general, Silenka Konstantin Vasilyevich. Oh, in Ukrainian. It was Ukrainian and Ukrainian language inscription uh -huh. on the grave. Yes, yes. See, in... I think the Ukrainian identity became repressed under the Soviet Union, and it became a symbol of freedom. And so Ukrainians regarded the, the Soviet Union as their, as their a foreign occupation but that's not quite true in because ukrainians were fighting on the sides of the bolsheviks in central and eastern ukraine so in most of ukraine the soviets were not the soviets were not them the soviets were us but here in galicia the history is a little different uh, galicia became poland after world war one after that that war that we, we talked about so here uh, western ukrainians always regarded the Soviet Union not as them, or not as us, but as as them. And I think that, that has strangers, a lot to do... Strangers. Yeah, and that has a lot to do with why the uh, the resistance, the protests, like their sort of kind of spiritual heart is in, is in Western Ukraine, because, yeah. Prosecutor, General Major, one of the you know, important lawyers, well, prosecutors yeah, in yeah. the USSR. Sanjarevsky. Uh, I wonder how the prosecutor's office worked in the USSR. <laughs> it was very, you know, very repressive. Process, system. due process. Oh. Another officer, but there is no. Yeah. Zvanyano, uh, no rate. Zverevi, all all Russians. Zverevi. Yeah. Kovilin. Well, not all. There was that one well, Ukrainian general. Ninety percent. Ninety per Very Russian. Very na Russian uh, names. Here some Ukrainian, I believe. Uh, Zinuk, maybe his wife. I don't know. Yeah. Rabovsky, or oh, here Ukrainian. Dotsenko, here Ukrainian, some Ukrainian. Uh, general major of aviation of aircraft mm -hmm. forces. 1929 through 1985. Mm -hmm. That's a very Ukrainian name. Yeah, U Ukrainian, but uh, inscription is in Russian. Yeah. Uh, he's a lieutenant, starshi lieutenant, higher lieutenant. a lieutenant. That's a fairly low. We have second lieutenant, first lieutenant. Yeah, it's that, like that's like lieutenant. two years in the two years as an officer. Uh -huh. You become okay. So Budeyeva, Russian name. Oh, very interesting. Very interesting. It's never been here. So. It's like it's like this this area alley is the Soviet Russian and the Soviet official mm -hmm. alley. Whoa, that's so crazy looking. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. Such like contrast in in the styles of these tombstones. Of course. Hrom Lavrenti Borisovich, sculptor. He was a sculptor. Oh, okay, that that makes sense that his grave would look like this. So it's interesting because uh, I believe it's the officer of Soviet aircraft forces and we have a coat of arms. But in the center empty place there was a five, uh, this communist star, you know, was... was, uh, was oh, half. so they removed it. Yeah, it, they removed and it. And who do you think removed it? I don't know, maybe some vandals, maybe relatives, but 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 the monument is quite alright, no one just ruined yeah, it. Yeah, they just removed the just Soviet removed star. Just removed the Soviet star. We have no cross, Orthodox or Catholic, no cross, but just the sign that he was the Soviet officer. And uh, there's an interesting building over there, across the street from the uh, 
cemetery. Um, I guess it's kind of convenient. It, you know, you don't have too far to walk in life if you don't want to. Yeah, if you yeah. feel tired. <laughs> yeah, good joke. It's like humor, but yeah. Good so uh, across there is where uh, is where children are born. So yeah. my daughter was Sophia yeah. was born there. Uh, so I my, wanted almost to... a year ago. She's eleven months old. Yes, <laughs> beautiful. Yep, we have a young father here. <laughs> Congratulations. Yeah, so if you don't if you're tired and don't feel like walking a lot in life, you just have to cross one street to go here. Polish writer from Lviv, one of the famous Polish writers, women writers from Lviv section. I think. General Polkovnik, General Colonel. Uh, Colonel. Colonel, 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 General Colonel. Or, no, Three Star General. I think that we would call this a Lieutenant General. Lieutenant, so. Lieutenant General yeah. in the uh, NKVD. <laughs> Those on his lapel over there. That's a. Uh, KGB. NKVS, NKVD, KGB. And here, the liquid. The big. You know, worker, creator, citizen. Famous worker, creator, citizen. Yeah. Oh, but he was only a general of KGB. <laughs> Famous Ukrainian painter, Joseph Kurilas. So, this is the this is a very interesting grave. You can see that it looks like a safe, and it is the grave of a, a banking family. What kind of what name is it? Rodina it says Sverchitsky. Family Sverchitsky. Polish name. Yeah, Polish bank.
Твоя, нехай буде воля Твоя, як на небі, так і на землі. Хліб нас насущний, дай нам сьогодні, і не веди нас провинене нашим, як і ми прощаємо нашим. І не веди нас у спокусу, але і Yeah.